This is your biology lesson six. Today's lesson is about... Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson. In your previous lesson, you learned about why do some enzymes need cofactors. Today, we learn about how do other substances, other than the cofactors, affect enzyme activity. Now let us start. Enzyme inhibition. Inhibitors are substances that bind to enzyme and prevent them from forming enzyme substrate complex. And as a result, either they stop or slow down the reaction. Inhibitors bind to an enzyme and prevent the formation of ES complex, enzyme substrate complex, or break down it to enzyme and product. In a tissue and the cell, different chemical agents, different ag chemical agents are considered to be inhibitors. Say, for example, metabolites, that is the byproduct of metabolism. Substrate analogs, a chemical with similar structure with the substrate. Okay, a chemical with a similar structure with the substrate is said to be substrate analogs. Toxins that are cousins which are produced in the living system and some drugs or metal complexes all these can inhibit the enzyme activity inhibitor arqaladeya kan oran karna wo arqaladeya falgal ka enzyme ka iyo substrate ka si an ku dhee sababta arqaladihi Add usku egihin kabis me the han, add usku egihin in zamka. See that that's it. Mesh substrate to gililha, arcaladihi so or dio so gilit. Savota was kukaboyat, skukaboyat. Wahana kamida, metabolite, byproduct of metabolism. Substrate analog. Car om addo kabis me kismarka lego, add ue substrate ka. Okay, substrate to egia. Marka wa si substrate ko ako so galit sa kahor or dio so kapsan the toxins poisons wa sunka yo drugs yo dawoyin ka yo drugoyin ka kalagitisan o chirke ni gala sa sa ayu so kapsan enzyme ka they inhibit the enzymatic activity now let's look the types of inhibitor. There are two main types of inhibitors. The first type is said to be irreversible inhibitor. And the second one is said to be reversible inhibitor. The irreversible inhibitors. The reversible inhibitors bind strongly to the enzyme, usually by a covalent bond permanently altering or changing the structure of the enzyme molecule and inactivating it. In this case, the irreversible molecule, the reversible inhibitor, binds strongly to the enzyme, okay, especially by a strong covalent bond, and permanently changing the structure of the enzyme molecule. That will make the enzyme inactive. Because the structure is totally changed, therefore that enzyme become inactive. That kind of inhibitor is said to be a reversible inhibitor. Mid unless so link in way. More I do inhibitor cast enzyme ka do but the low enzyme ka CD hore must oil in karnoka de okay. The painkiller aspirin is an example of an irreversible inhibitor. Aspirin 
is an example of inhibitor, reversible inhibitor. And it binds with the enzyme cyclooxidase 2, which is an important enzyme in producing prostaglandins, which give a sensation of pain. The second type of inhibitor is said to be reversible inhibitors. Reversible inhibitor binds to the enzyme only weakly, and the bond that holds them breaks easily, releasing the inhibitor. This allows the enzyme to become active again. Reversible inhibitor, after combining with the enzyme, enzyme inhibitor complex is formed, which can rapidly dissociate, which can rapidly dissociate. First of all, the inhibitor and the enzyme will combine, but the combination or the association is temporary. And the bond between them that hold them together is very weak. Therefore, it can easily be break. And then the enzyme is released and free to work normally again. Enzyme is inactive only when bound to the inhibitor, just temporarily. Just temporarily. Wakumelgarahan, enzyme ka, inyer wallahesta. That kind of uh, inhibition is said to be reversible inhibition. Enzyme inhibitor complex is held together by weak non covalent interaction. Therefore, it is said to be reversible. Mid the soil in Karawaya. Mid na, so no kodmala, okay? Enzyme ko reversible ko merkuya irreversible merkuya hai. O ki ho re merkuya hai so no kot mala hai. Enzyme ka du merod ko sadar enzyme ki yo. Inhibitor ka bas enzyme ka dip dumbe mushak en karosi di sa ho re. Lakin reversible inhibitor merkuya hai. Enzyme ko madama association ka o mit kumelgar ya hai inyer kadib na o ekalabihid karan. Enzyme to Sidisa Ayusha Kankara. The bone that holds this two is very, very weak and non covalent. Therefore, the enzyme can work again. Now, there are two main kinds of reversible inhibitors. We said that the inhibitors are basically divided into two groups irreversible, so no kodlawe, irreversible, mit so no kankara. The Sonokon Kara Hadana Kalakasama Labam no. There are two main kinds of reversible inhibitors. The first one is said to be competitive inhibitor and non competitive inhibitor. A competitive inhibitor is an inhibitor that have molecules with shape that are complementary to all or part of the active site of an enzyme. Competitive. And they are often similar in shape to the substrate molecule. They combine with the active site and prevent the substrate molecule from binding. Each molecule of competitive inhibitor can inhibit temporarily one enzyme molecule, but only if it can collide with the enzyme molecule and bind with the active site. If you look at this diagram, the substrate and the competitive inhibitor are very, very similar in shape, but they are different molecules, okay? Different molecules, but similar in shape. Since they are very similar, the inhibitor molecule can able to exactly fit to the active site of the enzyme. The active site of the enzyme competitively. competitively. Therefore, when the competitive inhibitor occupies the whole enzyme, the substrate will remain alone without enzyme. Such kind of inhibition 
is said to be competitive innovator. Competitive innovator. To do this, it must compete with the substrate molecule for active site. Hence, the name competitive inhibitor. Inhibitor has a structural similarity to the substrate, thus combined to the same active site. Okay? Competitive inhibitor interfere with the active site of the enzyme, so substrate cannot bind. The substrate, when it comes, it is already occupied. Okay? Therefore, it doesn't able to bind with the enzyme. Because the enzyme cannot differentiate between the substrate and the competitive inhibitor. Therefore, it can able simply join with the inhibitor. The binding is only temporary and the competitive inhibitor is quickly released and a competitive inhibitor block the active site so substrate molecule cannot bind. Remember, the binding is only temporarily and the competitive inhibitor is quickly released without any change. The overall effect on the rate of reaction depends on the relative concentration of the substrate and inhibitor molecule. The relative concentration of the substrate and the, uh, in the molecule, the inhibitor molecule, affects the overall rate of the reaction. When inhibitor binds, prevent the substrate from binding. Therefore, inhibitor can be released by increasing substrate concentration. Look. When you increase the substrate concentration, the chance of the inhibitor to compete with a large number of substrate will be very minimal, very minimal. Therefore, the substrate have more chance to collide with the enzyme and form enzyme substrate complex. But in the absence of in the absence of higher concentration of substrate, or when the substrate is concentration is very less and the concentration of the competitive inhibitor is very high, the chance of the enzyme and the substrate complex formation will be retarded. Therefore, the rate, the overall rate of the reaction will slow down due to lack of enough substrate concentration that can compete with the competitive inhibitor. Because of the competitive inhibitor and the substrates are very similar in their structure, they compete for the active site. Therefore, in order to win the competition, the substrate concentration should have to be increased in order to compete with the competitive inhibitor. Otherwise, the inhibitors, the competitive inhibitor, occupy all the active sites of the enzyme, therefore the overall rate of the reaction will slow down. If there were 99 substrate molecules for every inhibitor molecule, then 99% of the collision would be between enzyme and substrate, and the reaction will proceed at 99% of the maximum rate. When there is 99 substrate molecule for every inhibitor molecule, then 99% of the collision would be between enzyme and the substrate, and the reaction would proceed at 99% of maximum rate. Our reaction gun, at a user rare, because it was a gas and use cigar. You know, con Marquia substrate or sagashan your sagal, the work of Marquia, Rachu Kuna Sida Sokal. When, if the ratio were 90 substrate molecule to 10 inhibitor molecule, there will be 10% inhibition. Yes, of course. 10% inhibition, 
and the reaction rate will fall to 90% of maximum. Will fall. 90% of the reaction will fall. Because 99% when the inhibitors are 10%, therefore from 99 to 90. It will fall from 99 to 90 because the inhibitor molecules are 10%. The second form of inhibitors are said to be non-competitive inhibitors. The non-competitive inhibitors do not compete for the active site. Instead, they bind to another part of the enzyme called the allosteric site. The allosteric site is the site which is different from the active site, okay? which is different from the active site. Therefore, the non-competitive inhibitor Rather than competing to the active site, just it binds to the allosteric site of the enzyme. The allosteric site of the enzyme. This process, this produces the conformational change, structural change in the part of the enzyme molecule. That includes the active site. When the non competitive inhibitor attached to the allosteric site of the enzyme, the enzyme conformation will be changed. Kabdusmetka enzyme ki us bedel ma yar. Okay? Kabdusmetka dus bedel mo active site ki sidi wa li hore nokon ma yo marka semuna us bedel. Us bedel. Lakin competitive non competitive inhibitor ka ayu dahgal kara ayu dahgal ya enzyme ka in akale ma inside the active site but in the allosteric site another site or another small cleft. Mel banan yer o kaibta active site ke anahim. Mel banan yer ba jirta. Halka sa yu gale ya non competitive inhibitor ka. Morku galo, morku galo, active site ki kap dismet ki sa ayus badale ya. Ta sa mhekene sa enzyme ku si diwa yu hore an shakain kare. Because of this, the active site is a different shape and can no longer bind with the substrate to catalyze the reaction in a non-competitive inhibitor. The effectiveness of a non-competitive inhibitor is in no way affected by concentration of the substrate. Okay? The effectiveness of a non-competitive inhibitor is in no way affected by concentration of the substrate. Concentration of the substrate doesn't have any effect on the non-competitive inhibitor. Suppose there are enough inhibitor molecules to bind with the allosteric site of 80% of the enzyme molecule, 80% of the enzyme molecule be inhibited irrespective of the number of the substrate molecule, as the two are not competing for the same site, and the reaction rate will drop to 20% of the maximum. Madama, or Ladua Skumelma to Kumatartavaya, okay? Active site to Kumatartavaya. Can active site to Gali, can not allosteric site to Sugalaya. See that the tech substrate ka, a do le bediata, okay? A do le bediata. They don't have any effect on the uh, rate of the reaction because the concentration of the, the substrate has no any effect on the non-competitive inhibitor. The non-competitive inhibitor are particularly important in regulating the metabolic pathway in the cell. When you see the diagram, there is an enzyme, there is a substrate, but the allosteric inhibitor changes the shape of the enzyme, so it cannot bind to the substrate. The substrate cannot able to get to that uh, deformed active site. That is what you call the non-competitive inhibitor. There is a substrate. The non-competitive inhibitor is there, but the substrate is released without any change because the shape is changed 
Therefore, the substrate, even if it is attached to the active site, okay, once the non-competitive inhibitor is attack, attacking the enzyme, therefore, the substrate will not be converted into product, binding to the enzyme site different from the active site. And inhibitor and substrate combine enzyme at the same time, but no long, no reaction proceeds to the product site. How enzymes can be <clears throat> in a competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor interfere with the active site of the enzyme. And in non competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor binds to the enzyme at a place away from the active site, affecting the conformational change in the enzyme so that it can no longer bind to its substrate. How do inhibitors control enzyme activity in living cells? The control or regulation of enzyme activity. Many substances are produced in a cell as a result of metabolic pathway. That means a series of reactions which can be represented as substance A is changed to substance B with the involvement of enzyme 1 and substance B is again converted into substance C with the enzyme number two, with the involvement of enzyme number two, and substance C proceed to substance D when enzyme three is involved. Such serious reaction is said to be a metabolic pathway, and most of the cell metabolism activity is such kind. E1 E2 and E3 are enzymes catalyzing the reactions. All the reactions in this sequence are enzymes controlled. Therefore, inhibition of any of these enzymes will interrupt the process. That means if one of the enzymes is inhibited, therefore, therefore the reaction will not proceed forward. However, the main function of this pathway is to produce substance D for the use by the cell. If the requirement for substance D in the cell decreases, then the concentration of D will increase. But this is at least inefficient, producing sometimes that is not being used and may be potentially harmful because high concentration could be toxic. Such reaction sequences are often controlled by end product inhibition. Maana hawayan sida na regne reaction ka A to B, E to C, C to D. End product ka ne dona ye ila so sarawo wa D. Enzyme kala gitsan na ye ket ka gala ya. Lakin D banan ma kala so samayo Halgayaba, so sarkan badan or chem kalka or la badale A to D or lagu badale, so sarkan badan or halgayaba in Nordo, soon or chica and hamilka. Market sasa at the ado, city look control ila, okay, the end product left this in two worego, are you absanaya active side ka enzyme ka. The first enzyme, okay? When the active site of the first enzyme is attached by the end product, the end product serves as a substrate, okay? Just serves as a substrate and attached to the first reaction, the first enzyme. Therefore, the reaction will no longer proceed to B. That kind of inhibition is said to be end product inhibition. Look here. Substance A moves toward the substance B. Here, enzyme 1 is involved. And substance B is changed into substance C when enzyme 2 is involved. And finally, substance C is changed into substance D. Therefore, substance D is our end product. The end product returned back 
and attach it to the substrate to the enzyme, okay? Attach it to the enzyme one. The end products just serves as a substrate and attach it to enzyme one. Therefore, enzyme one could not able to proceed and produce substance B. Such kind of termination or control is said to be end product, end product inhibition. The end product D inhibit the enzyme controlling the first stage of the reaction sequence as shown in the diagram. Substance D normally acts as a non-competitive inhibitor which prevents the enzyme E1 from catalyzing the reaction, okay, that converts A to B. As a result, the entire reaction sequence is halted or changed or stopped. When the inhibition is removed, the metabolic pathway can start again. Sometimes a decrease in the concentration of D is sufficient to remove the inhibition. In other case, the inhibition must be removed by a substance known as an activator. Enzymes are often kept inactive in a cell by an inhibitor and are activated by a specific activator only when they are required. If too much product stop catalysis, that is repress. If too little product continue catalysis, that is activate. Binding not permanent, it can diffuse away. Mana away, wasosarka, dupato. It stops catalysis by end product inhibition. Activity gas, aya, nestrogen, aya. Okay? Repress. If too little product, it continues catalysis because the activators will activate the enzyme again to proceed forward. In this figure, it represents the metabolic pathway, the amino acid steroid is converted to another amino acid, isoleucine. Isoleucine acts as a non competitive or illustrative inhibitor. High concentration of isoleucine inhibits more and more of the enzyme catalyzing the first reaction in the pathway until the pathway is completely inhibited. Now let's look here. Intermediate A, that is the terol theronine. The theronine is one of the protein which is converted into intermediate A and enzyme 2 convert again into intermediate B to C, D, and finally isoleucine. Isoleucine return back and attach it to the enzyme B aminase. Okay? Enzyme 1, enzyme B aminase. That is what's called in product inhibition. End product inhibition. Therefore, it is isoleucine allostric allostrically inhibited the reaction. Isoleucine act as a non-competitive or allosteric inhibitor and high concentration of isoleucine inhibit more and more of the enzyme catalyzing the first reaction in the pathway until the pathway is completely inhibited. In a chain reaction, involves several enzymes and the product of one catalyzing reaction become substrate of the next. Just like this. Enzyme 1 produces these two and these two, the second one become a substrate for the third reaction. The third reaction product serve as a substrate for the fourth reaction. Strength is by this we end up today's lesson until we meet again in our next lesson. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.